All right, so let's talk about how to use some of those numeric keypad shortcuts without a numeric keypad. All right, so in Pro Tools, we have a lot of keyboard shortcuts that involve the numeric keypad. And if you don't have one of those longer keyboards with the numeric keypad on it, it can be a bit of a pain to figure out what to do, right? And I know a lot of people don't have a numeric keypad, right? I know if you want to get the official Mac version of the longer keyboard with the numeric keypad, it can be very expensive. I actually waited a long time to get mine, right? So I have... I have one of the actual MacBook ones, but, um, or not MacBook, but, you know, one of the official Mac ones. And this is the numeric keypad that I'm talking about. But um, I did wait a long time before getting this because it is very expensive and sometimes it can be kind of hard to justify getting. So um, I know that this is something that, that pops up for people uh, pretty often, I would think. So basically I made this list of shortcuts that I tend to use in Pro Tools that involve the numeric keypad, you know, the ones that I tend to use pretty often in my work. And today I'll be showing you some fixes for how you can still use those keyboard shortcuts, but just using the regular keypad instead. So just keep in mind that I am on a Mac computer here. So these are keyboard shortcuts for a Mac system. So if you're on Windows, I'm not entirely sure if these are gonna work for you. I'm sorry, I haven't checked all of them. Um, I haven't checked them on Windows to see if they work, but uh, maybe some people can help you in the comments below if you are on a Windows machine. So, so you know, feel free to comment if you're trying to sort out the Windows versions of these things. Uh, just let us know if, if some are similar or some are different. Um, we can all help each other out. So I'll be going into a little bit of detail on each of these shortcuts. So I'm actually gonna split this up into two different videos. So this will be part one and I'll have another video coming out soon that's part two uh, of the same idea. So I hope you like it. Okay, so one of the first shortcuts that I teach my college students is how to drop a marker. So when we're using a numeric keypad, we just hit enter on the numeric keypad and that pops up that new memory location dialog, right? And then we can label it. A lot of times I'll label it with the number of the marker and then you know whatever the label is. So I'm just gonna type some nonsense. And then you can hit enter on the numeric keypad again, or you can hit return to confirm that marker. So if I'm dropping a marker while recording, sometimes I'll just hit it twice really quickly and that drops the marker for you. Um, it's a really handy shortcut to know, but if you just hit enter or return is what it's called, I think officially on the, the regular part of the keyboard, so the main part of the keyboard, it doesn't do that for you. It brings you to the beginning of your session. So um, you probably just heard that noise as it jumped to the beginning of the session, but you'll see my cursor here. I hit return, it goes to the beginning of the session. So the way we work around that is we just wanna hold function. So um, I'm gonna reach up here to my laptop. Um, function and then hit return. And that'll open up that memory location dialog. So function return on a laptop is the same thing as hitting uh, enter on the numeric keypad, basically. So that's the workaround for that one. It's super handy. Um, that's all I gotta say about that one. Okay, the other one I wanted to show you is nudging. So a lot of times we use the numeric keypad to nudge around in Pro Tools. So um, basically what we do is we use the plus and the minus on the numeric keypad to nudge forwards and backwards. So right now I'm hitting plus, now I'm hitting backwards, and you just jump a little bit based on your nudge value, which you can actually set up here. So where it says nudge here, you can click and you can actually change the value by which this, this jumps, right? And you can change the unit of measurement too. So you can actually adjust how much um, you jump by whenever you use this nudge function. But basically, plus and minus on the numeric keypad allow you to nudge. But plus and minus on the regular keypad does not allow you to do the same thing, right? So basically what we do when we go to the regular keypad is we're going to use a comma and then period. So uh, period is to nudge forward and then commas to nudge backwards. And that's how you can use that same shortcut on your regular keyboard. Okay, and so the other one, the fix for this isn't exactly a shortcut, but it still works. Um, and it's basically the idea of using the asterisk, the star that's on the numeric keypad to enter your main counter. So you see if I click out here, and then I hit the star, the asterisk on my numeric keypad, it'll highlight this, uh, this uh, main counter, right? So. I'll show you that really quickly. So it highlights that there. And so now I can like type in here to jump around my session. I can um, use my arrow keys to move around here. Um, so I'm using the left and right arrow keys to move around within this time, uh, main time counter. And then I'm also using up and down to move around. So um, 
that's the asterisk on the numeric keypad. And then the fix for this is just to click in the main counter. I'm sorry, it's not super exciting, but you can click and then once you've clicked once, you can move around. So um, basically if you're outside of it, just click there and then you can move around however you want. So, and then I'm gonna hit enter and you'll see how it jumps my cursor to that spot in the timeline, right? So um, it's pretty handy. Um, you can either use the asterisk again and then enter where you wanna go, either by typing or by using the arrow keys and then just hit return and it'll jump you to that spot or you can actually just click and then navigate the same way. So um, that's that one. Okay, and so the other one that's really common that we use all the time in studios, not even kidding, just constantly, is using three to start recording, right? So if I have a track that's record enabled, um, let me create a new track here. Mono audio track, and I'm just gonna set its input here. I'm gonna open up my input output so I don't have to switch to the mix window. I'm gonna pick, I think it's uh, line six is my microphone. I'm gonna record enable it. So there I see my signal. That's for me talking to this microphone right now. Um, and I can just hit three to record, right? I have videos about how to start recording. Um, if you haven't seen them already, I'll put a card up on the screen for you guys. But basically that's how, how you record using the numeric keypad. Um, another way you can start recording is you can, um, and I think my OS is gonna override this, so, but you can do command spacebar to start recording. Yeah, so my OS overrode it. So basically my spotlight function, which is part of my Mac OS, is overriding that function. So what you can do is, if you don't use the spotlight especially is you can go to, into system preferences and then um, spotlight, that's where it is. So you hit spotlight and then what you wanna do is go down to keyboard shortcuts and then you want to get rid of this option here. So now command spacebar is no longer gonna open up my, um, my spotlight function. And so now when I hit command spacebar, it'll start recording. So uh, especially if you don't use that function, this can be really handy. Um, you just have to deactivate it so that you can, you can actually use that. Another one that you can use is F12, I believe starts recording too, but um, my OS overrides that as well and I've never like dug into that to figure it out. So maybe someone in the comments below can tell us um, what to change so that your F keys aren't overriding things. But um, yeah, that's my story about hitting three to record and how to use it without a numeric keypad. Um, oh, the other thing you can do, one. <laughs> One more thing, sorry, is you can always uh, hit this button and then hit the play to get it to record. Oh, I on record enabled my track. If you have a track that's record enabled, you can start recording by clicking these buttons up top here. But I don't want to go too much into recording because I have videos that are all about recording. All right, and so this last one, you might notice I'm kind of like traveling around the keypad looking at what I tend to use and then um, showing you an alternate version for it. So I'm kind of traveling around the keypad, but this is the last one I'll do for this video and then I'll do a few more in the next video. But basically, I'm not sure if it's a forward slash or a backslash, I, I forget. Sorry, I'm not looking at the mic so much. I hope it sounds halfway decent or intelligible, but um, it's this, this uh, button right here. So it's one of those, either forward or backslash. And basically, what this allows you to do is when you hit it, you'll notice if you look, I'm currently right here with my cursor in the middle of the screen here. But when I hit this button in a second here, you will see that it highlights up this start uh, number here. So it's kind of like entering the main counter, but it's entering our like highlight description counter. I forget what it's called technically, but um, so I'll hit this key here and it opens that up. And now I can travel around within that that section um, the same way as I did in the main counter, right? So I can move numbers up, move numbers down. I can hit enter and then it makes that highlight for me, right? So um, that allows you to highlight a really specific chunk of time. Sometimes that's handy. I don't use this one a ton, but I am aware of it. And basically the workaround's the same as that main counter. So you just click in that area and then you can move around the same way. And you can do that for you know the start value, the end value, the length of time, and then you just hit enter when you're done and it'll adjust that highlight for you. So it's just describing the highlight that you have. Um, it's as if you clicked and dragged with the selector tool. You can see that it, it reflects whatever is highlighted right here. So that's that. 
I hope some of those help some of you guys out there. I know um, my students all the time struggle with not having a numeric keypad and how to do some of these shortcuts. So I thought I would make a video about it. So that's about that. Uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you like this video, I would really appreciate it. Um, other than that, I have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Kato Noise. My patrons get access to additional content. We have a Discord server. Um, we started a book club, a ton of fun stuff. We're actually right now picking a new book for, um, we'll be picking a new book on Sunday, I believe. So. Now is a great time to join if you're interested in, in that part of things. Um, other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you for watching. Okay. And you'll see how it jumps my cursor over to that spot in the, in the time, time line. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what to say. I got new monitors. I'm really excited about them. They're the Cali in 8 monitors, um, which I didn't know they were named after a town in California called Independence, which I actually drive through a lot when I go snowboarding. So I was pretty pumped to find that out. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, so far, I'm really happy with them. So I'm excited. Okay. Uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.